People who live near the Brooklyn Center Police Department are desperate for help as protests continue to unfold on their doorstep weeks after the death of Dante Wright. That is our top story tonight. I'm Kelsey Carlson. And I'm Randy Meyer. Fox 9's Hannah Flood is live in Brooklyn Center for us this evening. Hannah, you talked to some of those residents today. What'd they have to say? Kelsey and Randy, it's been an extremely challenging three weeks for these residents, as you can imagine. They say there are about 60 families that live in these buildings directly across the street from the Brooklyn Center Police Department. And they say they need some help moving on and in some cases moving out. It's been very traumatic. It's chaotic. It's mentally frustrating. Exactly. That's how some of the residents of Sterling Square Apartments in Brooklyn Center described the last three weeks. Nobody wants to live in these units. They said from the tear gas to the flashbangs to three weeks of demonstrations. It's when it goes on at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and my kids have to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to school. They've had a front row seat to all of it and now say they don't feel secure in their own homes. It's not safe, you know, when you have to deal with people breaking in, you have to deal with people trying to set the hallways on fire. They're tired and they're scared. Where's our protection? You know, where are these tenants' protection? Like, where, where, where's their safety? Kia Welsh is one of the tenants who's been communicating with city leaders to get residents resources they need. What are you guys doing? And we need to hold you guys accountable because when you say you're going to do this, we need to actually see this being done. They're asking for help with things like cleaning services to free their homes from chemicals and tear gas and mental health resources for their traumatized children. I have younger kids. They don't know what's fireworks, what's tear gas, what's gunfire. They're also asking the city to help them leave the building for good. Do you feel like you could ever feel safe here again? No, I don't mm -mm. think I <laughs> No? I don't, I, and I haven't heard any of the tenants say that they feel safe mm -mm. here. We're like sitting ducks here. We're like sitting ducks. And the best thing we can do for our families is to get as far away from here as we can. Now, these women that I talked to today said the city is helping with providing some of these resources and moving some of this forward. And they're just hoping that some of their needs are met. The city says they are working with the property owners that own these apartment buildings and are also working with Hennepin County to get some mental health resources. In a statement, the city says, quote, city leadership have begun a series of listening sessions in different locations and varying times to ensure that the residents and businesses have the opportunities to be heard regarding their needs and concerns. Healing circles will also be introduced in some of these sessions as part of the community's efforts to recover. Now, residents tell me they hope that support continues and that some of their most urgent needs like safety are met. There are some other nonprofits that are stepping in to help as well, and we have more information on that on our website. For now, live in Brooklyn Center, Hannah Flood, Fox 9. Well, hundreds marched through Brooklyn Center to pay tribute to Dante Wright three weeks after he was shot and killed by a police officer. That march was led by Wright's parents, siblings, and community activists who want people to remember what happened to him. Former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter is charged with second degree manslaughter in Wright's death. The former Brooklyn Center police chief said that he feels Potter meant to pull her taser during the April 11th traffic stop but pulled her handgun instead. Activists are calling for more severe charges in this case.